In this video I'm going to try and help you a little bit with the potato core part of lab number four. Now, if you've already set it up it should look something like this. A crude diagram here. You have four cups set up. In the first cup you uh, have put some distilled water in that cup. If that water is distilled it means it's a hundred percent water it has no solutes in it at all. In the second cup, you've mixed up a 1.75% salt solution. That means that 1.75% of the molecules in this water are salt and 98.25% are water. Third cup has a 3.5% salt solution which means that 96.5% of the molecules are water, 3.5% of them are salt, and in cup number four you've made up a 7% salt solution, 93% of the molecules in here are water. Then you have cut some potato cores. You've cut a total of eight cores. You've cut them as close to 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters by 40 millimeters so you have a volume of 4,000 cubic millimeters for each of the cores. Now in the data table it asks you to enter what the average volume is for those two. Try and cut them as close as you can to, four, to 10 by 10 by 40. But if this one is 4150 and this one is 3980, Add those two together, divide by two, and that's the number you put as your beginning average volume. So you cut your cores, you measure and get their average uh, volume for the two of them, enter that data in your data table. Put the cores in the four cups and let them sit for about eight hours. At the end of eight hours, take them out pat them dry with a paper towel and measure them again. They're going to have changed in volume. The ch well, they are either going to get larger or they're going to get smaller. And I guess that it's a possibility also that they stay the same. But big hint is that theoretically, if this is done right, none of them will stay exactly the same. Pat them dry and measure them again. And then on your data table, what is the new, what is the ending average volume of these two cores that sat for eight hours in the 0% salt solution? What is the ending average volume of these two cores? What is the ending average volume of these and of these? Now, the the osmosis information about this and, and what you're observing. You know to begin with what the concentration of salt and therefore the concentration of water is in each of those cups. The potatoes have a solute concentration too. Potatoes are a little bit salty, but we don't know what the concentration is of the salt to begin with. We can make some estimations after you see what your results are. Let's go back to the data table for just a minute. You know that you're starting out with a beginning average volume of about 4,000 cubic millimeters. You record your ending average volume in cubic millimeters. If it if, if your cores end up larger after soaking in the solution than they were at the beginning, then the percent difference is going to increase. The difference is going to be an increase, isn't it? But don't just report what the numerical increase is. You have to figure what the percent difference is. Um, those percent differences, I'll, I'll leave the math to you, but if you don't know how to figure percent difference, just do a Google search, type in how do percent differences, there'll be a page like 
math buddies or math is fun or something like that that'll tell you how to do those. I'll tell you right now, theoretically, some of the cores are going to get larger and some of the cores are going to decrease in size. And the challenge in the lab and in interpreting this part of the lab is, is to explain those results in terms of osmosis. Let's consider what might happen. If the cores get larger, then that means that they have taken in more water than they have lost. Remember that water molecules are always moving across cell membranes. So water molecules are always going out of each core and always going back into each core. What we're concerned about is what the net movement of water molecules is. Is more water going in to the cores and therefore causing them to increase in volume? Or is more water going out of the cores into the solution and causing them to shrink? If the water cores, if the, if the cores in the water swell, that means that they were in a solution that was hypotonic. Hypotonic means more water in relation to another environment. So a core that would increase in size would have absorbed more water molecules than it gave off. The cores themselves would be hypertonic in relation to their environment the environment would be hypotonic in relation to the cores. If the cores shrink in size, then the cores themselves were hypotonic, their environment was hypertonic, there was more water leaving the cores than was coming back in again. Is that clear? <laughs> I hope so. Well, after you watch this and you do the lab, I'd appreciate knowing if this helped you at all. I'd be glad to do some more. If you find that they help, then just ask me to do one on a particular topic. If they don't help you at all, or you're more confused now than when you started, oh, let me know that too. <laughs>